there. Welcome back to Sport on 7. I'm Tom Bush. It's all about the tennis this week, of course. We've had two great weeks of tennis. The final week, of course, the ATP Men's Week. Now, David Mercer has been covering this tournament for the 21 years it has been going. So he has some great memories about what's happened on centre court behind me. Also, we chat about tennis in 2013 as well. Talking of 2013 as a whole, I mean, we really are seeing a Novak Andy Murray rivalry take place. They're good friends, of course, but those two could very well see themselves at the top of, ga top of the game and in multiple Grand Slam finals to come. Yes, obviously, they've contested the last two Grand Slam finals Murray winning his first major at the US Open and then Novak getting his revenge down in Australia just last month. But, you know, let's not count out the other two guys in, in the top four. Sure. Roger is into his 30s. He's probably past his prime, but he showed at Wimbledon last year that he's still capable of winning more majors. Um, you know, to my mind, the greatest player of all time. And Rafa, well, you know, he's back playing after all the knee problems. Obviously, he's chosen to play on clay rather than come here to Dubai and play on a hard court because he's not too sure about his knees. Uh, but Certainly, when one thinks about the next major, the French Open, I mean, he's only ever lost one match in Paris, so you can't write him out. What we need, uh, you know, we've got the fabulous four. What we need is one or two others pushing through. It looked as if Juan Martín del Potro, who's here, was going to be the, make it the fabulous five when he won the US Open, but then sadly he got injured, a very nasty wrist injury. He's never quite recovered that form, but I'm sure he's capable of doing so. And, and we need some of the, uh, the, the younger players to come through as well and really push them. And I'm sure we'll see some real stars emerging in the next couple of years. Well, just in my short time in Dubai, I've seen some terrific games on this uh, centre court here at the Dubai Duty Free Tennis Stadium. But you, of course, you've been coming here for the 21 years of this tournament. There must have been some special moments that you can remember on this centre court? Yeah, they, they certainly have one women's final that stands out. Uh, was uh, Monica Sellers against Justine Ennan. Monica had a match point, but it was Justine who came back to actually win the match in a terrific match. Uh, so many involving the Newton, Federer and, and Djokovic and so on. But one particular memory I have, there was a young Spaniard who came here and we all thought, well, he's going to be fairly useful. And he turned out to be a world number one, a w winner at the French Open, Juan Carlos Ferrero. And he got involved in a late match that went on beyond midnight. And the next day, or in fact, we finished on his birthday, his 21st birthday. So that's one of those sort of special memories that, that sticks out. Might not have been at the greatest match, but it, it was such an occasion because it went past the midnight hour and became his 21st birthday. And little things, Alex Correcha, another Spaniard who was a champion here, came back the following year and lost in the first round in a fabulous match. But he was in tears afterwards because he thought he'd let the tournament down as the defending champion by losing in the first round. He hadn't. He'd bust a gut to win the match, but he'd lost. And you know, that happens in tennis. You, you, know, you come up against a really inspired opponent. But those are little memories that, that stick in my mind. It's not just the tennis. It's, it's the, the fact that players like Alex have got so emotional about this tournament. They've seen it grow from its humble beginnings when I used to climb up three ladders to a commentary <laughs> box which swayed in the breeze because it was on scaffolding. And now we have this magnificent stadium. So it's been a great privilege to be part of this tournament for so long and to see it grow from humble roots. First final had to be postponed because of a schmal. It, the, the sand was all over the court. We couldn't play the final. And they had to come back the next day and, and to see it where it is now in this fabulous stadium with great stars here every year. As I say, it's been a real privilege to be a, a small part of it. Absolutely. And you talk about those players. I mean, they, they come back year on year, don't they? They have a real association with this tournament, like you say, in tears because they haven't, defend, they haven't defended their title. But it, it, it just brings out the best in them, doesn't it? It does, because they're so well looked after. I mean, this year we've now got the, the new hotel. So, you know, it's for me, it's a, a five-minute stroll from my room across to the commentary box and the press room to do your preparation and so on and every year the facilities here get better because you know, the, the people who run this tournament from Colin McLaughlin down through the people who man the press room and look after the players in the restaurants and so on they've learnt all the time they're always trying next year we'll do it even better and they do it, it's incredible Absolutely. well David thanks for talking to me once again and we'll see you next year I sincerely hope so <laughs>
Now, as we saw in the men's draw, the defending champion Roger Federer was placed up against the Arab number one from Tunisia, Malik Jaziri. For Jaziri, he hadn't played since October because of an injury, and all of a sudden he was on centre court against the greatest tennis player of all time. I tell you what, though, he wasn't here to make up the numbers. He, in fact, took the first set off Roger, 7-5, even though Roger Federer did come back, 6-love in the second, and then took it in the third. Malik Jaziri was pleased of the experience. Well, Malek Jaziri, what an opening draw that was for you in Dubai, of course. Your first game in a while as well. I mean, talk me through that match with Roger Federer. Yeah, sure, it was not an uh, easy match, you know, when he played top 10, you know. I, I, I tried to do my best today, you know, like I didn't play uh, since few months tournaments. I was off of the courts, I have injured in my knee and it was today the, my first match and I play a Roger, so I take a lot of pleasure on the court. I tried to do my best, really I wasn't in... Uh, I wasn't in my all, you know, like uh, I wasn't 100 percent. So uh, I started doing my best, but you know, it's my first match, and you know, I played just one week before, you know, to, to come here. Some tennis, I was not ready. I didn't make preparation, you know, after a few months. So I tried my best. I come here. I would like to thanks uh, the organization that they give me the the World Cup to be here, and uh, I hope in the future I will play more matches like this, and uh, I will my rank will be higher than this one now. What were your thoughts when you saw the draw and saw that you had Roger Federer? Were you pleased that you would have the opportunity on centre court with the packed stadium? Uh, sure, you know, uh, you play, we play tennis to have uh, matches like this, you know, to play uh, legends like Federer, you know. So um, I, I was happy to play uh, Roger. They take more pleasure in the court, take fun, you know, and enjoy and, uh, and uh, give, me, can give me more confidence, you know, in the future. Were you surprised about how that first set turned out? Were you thinking you could get a set off him tonight? Yeah, well, you know, it was before, I, you know, last year I played, you know, in the beginning of the year I played in Doha. So long I made three sets too, you know, I'll have a lot of chances and opportunities. Uh, this year too, you know, I, today I, I think I was not really physically, but, you know, I, I tried to do my best. But uh, like I told you, uh, uh, this match can be more confidence in the future. You're Arab number one, of course. Did you really feel the support in the stands in Dubai tonight? Because they were cheering you along, certainly when you won that first set, weren't they? Yeah, sure. You know, I would like all the Tunisians first and all Arabic people and all, all the people who support me today. You know, they, there was a lot of Tunisians come to support me here. It was great, you know, to, uh, that to represent uh, Tunisia and all Arabic countries. And uh, I think it's very good to, to show the people that there is Arabic tennis and uh, uh, they need just a lot of support, you know, because they need sponsors and they need more support and they believe in themselves. That's me talking to Malik Jaziri straight after his match against Roger Federer. And for Roger Federer, the defending champion, five-time champion in Dubai, he found it tough. Yeah, I mean, I've had rocky uh, starts here to the tournament here in previous years. And, um, you know, I play somewhat fast and... Uh, um, so there's, there's not much rhythm out there and I think we were both not playing really well in the beginning. We were both missing a lot of first serves or him in particular and I think because I couldn't take advantage, you know, I went from not so good to really not so good and then he got better uh, naturally, which I was hoping to do as well and then he played better at the back end of the set and then for me it was important to sort of react and make sure I don't panic. But of course, you know, you, you, your mind starts to wander, especially in a match where there's hardly any rallies. He's going for broke on every return, and all you're trying to do is get into some rallies, and you're missing a lot yourself. So, I mean, it was a difficult match for me out here, out here tonight, but I'm happy I found a way, and, uh, you know, probably got a day off now, so I can maybe work a little bit on the game, or just maybe the pressure's off a little bit, and then automatically you'll play a bit better in the second, second round. So Roger Federer survived that first round scare, but for Malik Jaziri, let's hope he can get himself back into the world top 70 soon enough. Right, next on Sport on 7, I speak to Chris McCarty here at the Irish Village about what's going on in local sport over the last seven days. We'll also chat to the 2013 Dubai GT3 Tennis Championships champion.